I just realized something that I never actually did on the website before, even though I've gotten many emails and phone calls in regards to this, but many people have asked me to explain what is purgatory that the Vatican teaches. Well, in the Vatican-approved catechism book, it states the following regarding purgatory, and this is from someone they call St. Augustine, and he says it speaks of the pain which purgatorial fire causes as more severe than anything a man can suffer in this life. In other words, it's even worse than the flames on planet Earth. But like a nun told me once, you don't burn away, you just feel the pain. And then Gregory the Great speaks of those who after this life will expiate their faults by purgatorial flames. And then he adds that the pain will be more intolerable than any one can suffer in this life. In other words, purgatory is all about fear and the ability to use that fear to control the people. If the powers that be in Rome can convince their flock they alone have the truth, then their people are going to bow to them and trust them, feeling as if they have no other choice. I mean, for Rome, that has been the norm for literally centuries. But we are now in the last days. When we have the ability to check their claims with the written word of God, thanks to the Bible being printed in every language known to man. I mean, long gone are the days of Roman prelates standing before the people as the sole bearers of the truth. Today, they are now seen in the light of truth. And as prophesied, they are the most evil men ever to walk this earth. The Bible clearly says, Our Heavenly Father is a God of love and a God of peace in 2 Corinthians 13, 11, as well as many other verses in the Bible. But for centuries, Rome outlawed the Bible so as to prevent the people from knowing the truth about how a loving a God he truly is, so as to cultivate a mindset in the people that believed the God of heaven was a tyrant who demands pain and suffering of his people before they can even enter into heaven. Well, that lie was fabricated for a reason. It allows the priests to be violent to the people without any recourse from the people for many centuries because the loyal Roman Catholics thought, well, that type of anger was the norm for the Father in heaven, so it must mean these men truly are walking with him. But now that we have Bibles in hand, does that really sound like a loving father? Well, no, of course not. It sounds more like the dying God of this world. Well, that being said, why do the popes of Rome declare that when a Christian dies, they must first enter into the torments of purgatory when there's not a single Bible verse to back it up. And especially today. Well, yeah, we've got probably billions of Bibles out there, but still, most people don't read them. But some do. And the ones that do know that the prophesied man of sin has been exposed, wherein anyone that opens the Bible can see his evil acts plainly now. I mean, everything from child molestation to homosexual brothels that are being bought and paid for with Vatican money. With, with that being said, who on earth is going to believe these men when they claim doctrines like purgatory exist when anyone that opens a Bible can see they're lying? Well, there's the key. They know most people won't open that Bible. That's why they shun it so much. Purgatory was invented so the popes and the prelates of Rome can control the people. The doctrines of the Catholic Church are entirely independent of Holy Scripture. And that was stated by some priest named Muller. And so again, who was more trustworthy? The God of the Bible or the men that the Bible defines by using many prophetic and historic records as being antichrist? You know, I recall as a very young Catholic boy in parochial school asking the nun one day to explain purgatory to me because it scared me to death. I mean, I loved the Lord as a little child, and I simply couldn't believe he would be so mean and hateful. Well, she sat me down, and she looked me straight in the eyes and said with a stern look on her face that the flames are very real, and I was destined to burn in those real flames as long as it would take, just so I can get ready to be in God's holy presence. That's all she or any priest would ever say about it when I asked them. And when asked to give more details, they would tell me that the common man can't possibly understand what the leaders of the church do unless they dedicate their lives to God as they did. And so, of course, as a little boy, I was left with no choice but to trust them over the Lord I loved. And I began to fear God in a way that confused me about how his love was truly defined by him, even as a child. I mean, it never stopped me from loving or even praying to him as I often did in the prairies of Illinois when I was a little boy, you know, because I like to wander in there looking for critters. But it was part and parcel to the reason I rebelled from my God, the God I loved 
in a big way in my teenage years. And yes, this is what Catholicism, and especially the doctrine of purgatory, is designed to do all along. This doctrine not only states it's useless to try and be perfect, because even if you were, you would still be unable to stand before God without first burning in purgatory for millions of years. And then the other toss of the coin on this false doctrine is that it also creates hate in the hearts of billions because they see no love in the God of heaven when he promises to put his people and their loved ones in purgatory and lets them burn for millions and millions and millions of years just to be ready to be in his loving presence and then in his eternal kingdom. And so ask your priest and then ask your nun this. If we all need the cleansing and purgatorial flames to be in the presence of the Lord. Why is it nary a single soul felt so much as the heat of a candle flame when Jesus Christ himself walked among us 2,000 years ago? My Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Not a single purgatorial flicker ever came from his loving presence 2,000 years ago. And since he never changes... It will never be needed to gain his loving presence in the future. And then on that page that I'm going to be making and putting this transcript on, I'm also going to be putting some links in regards to why they really started the purgatory lie. It's so they could build the Vatican using the money that John Tetzel would get by going into the cities and telling the people, if you don't give money, you're going to not only burn in purgatory, your loved ones won't get out of purgatory. And so that's how they built the Vatican. And then Pope Benedict the 16th in 2009 reinstituted the selling of those same indulgences that John Tetzel sold so that they can get people time off in purgatory once again. So this isn't an ancient doctrine. They didn't do away with this. They're still pushing it and still making money with it. And I will also be posting the pictures and the statues and the sculptures that they have in the Vatican and other places that literally show what Tetzel showed in his banners that he would unfurl when he would get out there in front of the people. Some of the most scary sights about people burning in purgatory. The prelates in Rome are destroying the faith of billions. Pray for these people. And thank you for watching. God bless.